Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a second tutorial in the series on multi-threading in Java from Cave of Programming. So in the first tutorial we saw how to start threads in Java and in this tutorial we're going to look, uh, we're going to start to look at um, basic thread synchronization. Now there are, there are two problems that you encounter if you have um, more than one thread sharing the same data two kinds of problems and the first one we're going to look at in this tutorial and it has to do with data being cached and the second kind of problem which is more vicious has to do with threads interleaving uh, and we're going to look at that in the next tutorial but here I'm going to show you um, the purpose of the volatile keyword in Java and we're going to look at um, some very basic thread synchronization so I'm gonna I'm in Eclipse here, and I've cre I've created a project, and I've created a class with a main method, and I'm gonna create another class here, which I'll call uh, let's call it Processor, and I'll say that Processor extends Thread, and the idea is that Processor is gonna run some code in its own thread, so I'll give this a public void run method, and um, here I'm actually overriding. Um, the public void run method in the thread class. So I can put some code in here that I want to run. And you know, I'm going to start off actually with um, just an infinite loop here. So I'll say while true. And in this loop, I'll um, do a sysal and say hello so we can see something happening. And then I'll make it pause for a tenth of a second before going around the loop again. So I'll use the thread.sleep um, method that we saw in the last tutorial and I'll make this pause for a tenth of a second, 100 milliseconds and I've just got to handle the exception there. Now I can run that code in its own thread by saying processor processor here we go um, I'll call it proc1 equals new processor and now I'll say proc1.start and start um, will tell the, the thread class to run the code in the run method in its own thread. So if I run this now, um, we're just going to see hello coming out every tenth of a second. Now um, the problem comes when you start thinking about how you could terminate the processor gracefully. And uh, one way to do it would be to um, use thread interruptions. And we're going to look at those in, um, uh, further on in this series of tutorials. But here I want to show you an example of using some shared data. So I'm going to create a um, variable here. I'll make it a private variable of the type um, boolean. And I'll call this shutdown. And I'll say shutdown equals false to start with. And I'm going to say while, um, actually make, let's make it, let's call it running on second thoughts and let's make it true to start with and I'm going to say while running do the loop and I'm going to give this a, um, a method called shutdown so I'll call it public void shutdown and um, I'm going to say in shutdown that running equals false equals false and uh, in my main program here I want to have some way of pausing until um, until I um, call the shutdown method, until I want to call it. So to do that I'll just create a scanner here, equals new scanner. And scanner is, um, is just a class that can scan um, input streams. And uh, I'm going to just use it here to detect a new line in the system.in input stream. So I'm going to say scanner.nextline and that will just pause execution of my main thread, my main program here, until I hit the return key, basically, in the console. And when I hit the, hit the return key, um, in fact, let's, let's have a prompt here. Let's say sysout um, press return to stop. When I hit the return key, I'm just going to call proc1.shutdown. Now uh, let's see what happens when I run that. So I'll run this and it's merrily saying hello and I'll hit the return key and it has stopped 
and if I run it again hit the return key again it stopped and in fact I must confess I've never seen um, this kind of setup not work but here's the catch because apparently under some conditions or under some on some systems or maybe I don't know with some impl implementations of Java um, this thread here the thread that's running this code might decide to cache this value at the, at the start um, so that it will never um, see the changed value of it and uh, the reason for that is that um, we've basically got two threads here um, this main program has its own thread and I'm kind of spawning off another thread when I call start here and I'm running this code in a different thread to the main thread so we've got two threads running here and both threads are accessing the same variable so this, this thread here is reading running um, every time it goes around the loop in theory it should check the running variable and this thread here is writing to running because when it calls shut down it's calling shut down in the main thread and that's then going into this method and calling setting running to false in the main thread but the problem is that um, when Java tries to optimize um, code um, one single thread kind of doesn't expect other threads to modify its data so um, this this code here this this thread here has its own copy of running and um, it's not expecting um, it's not expecting other threads to modify it I mean I guess it's not strictly speaking uh, it's not strictly speaking true to say that it has its own copy of running there's only one running but nevertheless this thread might look at what's going on in this thread alone and say okay I never actually changed the value of running I never set it to true um, because shutdown isn't called in this thread here um, so running never changes in this thread and it's going to say okay in that case I'm not going to I'm going to optimize I'm not going to bother checking the value of running every time I go around the while loop I'm just going to assume that running will always be true and I'll keep going forever and in theory that could happen on some systems so to prevent that happening um, you use the volatile keyword and I can say private volatile boolean running equals true and in this case it has no discernible effect the program still works but the difference is that now this code is guaranteed to work on all systems, on all implementations of Java and um, there's no chance of me calling shut down and of um, the new value of running being ignore, ignored by this thread so that's what, the, what Volatile is used for it's used to prevent threads caching variables when they're not changed um, from within that thread um, and if you want to change a variable from another thread you either have to use volatile, make it volatile, or as we'll see in the next tutorial, you have to use some kind of thread synchronization. So that's it for this tutorial, um, and this is pretty simple, and this is just a technique that you can use if you want to shut down a thread or multiple threads gracefully from another thread. In the next tutorial, we're going to get on to looking at the slightly thornier problem of threads interleaving, and we're going to look at what can actually go wrong there and unlike with this um, this particular case caching variables um, it's very easy to demonstrate things going wrong with um, when you're reading and writing integers from multiple threads for example so we'll look at that in the next tutorial so join me again then and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com and you can also find there um, links to more complete tutorial series so um, check those out if you will and until next time, happy coding.